Hello everybody, Dr. Tabor here and I wanted to shoot a quick video for you and I'm going to start doing a lot more of these informational videos answering some of the most common questions that I get as a chiropractor and if you have any questions please put them in the links below uh, or you can even e send me an email at purelifefamilywellness at hotmail.com uh, and uh, and we'll get your questions answered. So one of the most common questions that I get is how often should I get adjusted? All right, so I'm going to take you through and show you what I believe this answer is. And it's based off of my experience, um, the research that I've done, and some of the research that I've seen in the field of chiropractic and even in just uh, medicine in general and spinal health in general and so I think any chiropractor who answers this question might give you a slightly different answer based on their experience and the research that they've done uh, but this is coming for me I've spent a considerable amount of time trying to answer this question for myself and for my family to make sure that we're getting the absolute best results so first of all let me tell you a little bit about my experience and where this answer is coming from so I've been a chiropractor now for uh, over 15 years I am the producer or executive producer or co-executive -ex producer of the the movie and documentary a better way if you haven't seen that it's on Amazon if you search for a better way it's a great movie uh, you'll learn a lot from that I've seen thousands of patients in my office over the years and I kind of keep a you know a, a relative track on how many adjustments I've given chiropractic adjustments and in my career so far I've given about hundred and eighty thousand adjustments so that's where my experience is coming from I've had my hands on a lot of people been able to see a lot of people get well and stay well and I kind of seen you know how much adjustments it took to get them there and how many adjustments it took to keep them there right um, I personally have been through this experience I've suffered severe back pain when I was a teenager I couldn't hardly function I was on so many different pain medications it was crazy how many medications I took and chiropractic saved me it saved me not only from the pain but I truly believe it saved me from a crazy opioid epidemic that happened right started right when I was a teenager late 90s and uh, and it just escalated from there so I truly believe chiropractic saved my life and health is a top priority for me and that's why I wanted to bring you uh, some of these uh, these videos a lot more often now okay so what we do in our office to decide how uh, how often you should get adjusted first is we always do an evaluation and that's because everybody's a little bit different so I'm gonna give you kinda um, based off of the evaluation we do what we recommend and I'm gonna walk you through those numbers don't worry I'm gonna actually give you a per visit based on what um, we find in our evaluation I'll show you exactly and that way you can kinda see where you lay you you might lie in in this uh, continuum here Okay, so our evaluations in our office might consist of uh, range of motion findings. We want to see how well that spine is moving. Um, some palpation, so we might feel and push and see uh, what the joints feel like. It's important that those joints move properly. Uh, we do a posture analysis, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, this young lady, we've done a posture analysis. We can see where posture is deviated from normal. That could put stress, wear, and tear on those joints and pressure and irritation on the nerves. And then we may do an x-ray analysis as well so we can actually measure the spine we can look and see how healthy those discs are if there's any arthritis bone spurring calcifications all of those things are important we're going to take all of that into account when we're determining uh, you know what frequency of care that you should be on so the evaluation is always important if someone just comes up to you if a chiropractor just comes up to you and says you need to come in X times per week and they haven't done an evaluation you know I would uh, I would not take that too seriously so we really need to know uh, you know what condition your spine is in to know what frequency of care you should be under or how many times you should be adjusted okay so my recommendations are always based on number one your goals and then number two my findings during that evaluation that we just talked about so for example someone might come in and say my goal is only to get out of pain or my goal is to eliminate these headaches or my my goal is to stop this sciatica that's been bothering me well we're gonna base you know our recommendations off of your goal but we're also gonna base those recommendations off the findings that we see in that exam and make sure those two can go together right because if I tell you you need to come in you know once a week and in order to get rid of your headaches but you only want to come in once every month 
those those goals and those findings just don't match up, right? So we want to make sure that they're that it's based on both goals and findings. Now, some people want even bigger goals, not just to get out of pain. Some people want to run a marathon. They want to start going for jogs again. Some people have grandkids or children they want to play with, and those are their goals. And so we want to get them not only back to health really quickly, but then be able to keep them healthy and keep them in a trajectory where they're just kind of going to get healthier and healthier and able to do the things that they want to do. So it's important for you to think about what your goals are when you're trying to decide how often you should get adjusted. Okay, now that being said, all of that being said, here's kind of the phases of care that we uh, would recommend in our office. There are three different phases, and I'll kind of talk you through um, what the frequency is for each phase and why we do uh, what we do for each phase. Okay, now some people come in and they need to start with an initial intensive care right? Because let's say they have a really bad flare-up. Their back is what we call hot, right? They can't even hardly sit down. They can't function. They can't sleep. They're in so much pain. It's miserable for them. Well, we may have to start them off at an initial intensive care phase where we, we're trying to stabilize the problem, we're trying to stop the damage, and we're trying to get them out of pain as quickly as possible, right? So they might have to come in every day in that initial phase of care. Now, we don't know how long that would go, but we're just trying to get them to back to a stable, uh, a, a stable position, right? Now, the second phase of care, hopefully you don't have to start in the initial, uh, initial intensive care, but if you did... Um, you know, we would then move you into a corrective care phase. A lot of people just start in corrective care because they don't need the intensive daily adjustments. So if they start in corrective care, our objective in corrective care is to re retrain the spine, to improve function, and to improve health. So if you came in and we found a problem in your spine that we need to correct, then we want to actually start off at a little bit higher frequency. So we may do two to three visits per week trying to correct that problem in your spine or at least correct it as much as possible. And we may do that two to three months at two to three times a week. And then, but of course, you know, as we go through there, every, you know, eight to 10 to 12 visits, we're doing re-exams, we're reassessing, we're reevaluating, we're seeing the progress that we're making and we're, one, and we're checking to see when we can drop that frequency down into the next phase, which would be phase three, wellness care or maintenance care. Now that's really where we want everybody to be. Uh, for those of you who have been under care for a long time, or maybe your your kids don't have an issue or a problem and you can start at wellness care or maintenance care, that's a that's awesome. That's that's ideally what we want for everyone. Unfortunately, some people have to start at the initial intensive care. Some people have to start in, in corrective care. But we want to get you to wellness care and maintenance care. And this is continuing the care at the same trajectory or maintaining their new level of health to protect their progress, right? So especially if you've been through initial and corrective care, we don't want you to lose the progress that you've made. Uh, wellness or maintenance care could could vary depending on your health, okay? So if you're someone, and I'll show you in just a second, if you're someone who has severe arthritis and you're, you know, you know, in your late 50s, 60s, 70s, like, you know, and we've tried to correct that as much as possible, we may need you to come in a little bit more frequently. Uh, if you're someone who's active and you want to stay active and you're, you're, you know, you're exercising a lot or you're in front of a computer or you're having to sit for long periods of time, so you're just somebody who has a lot of stress on their spine, basically, you may be at a higher frequency. And so I recommend wellness care at weekly once a week checkups and adjustments. Some people come in every other week and then very, very, very few, usually the really young will say monthly because their spines are in, in such a great shape. So let's dive into each one of these so you can, you can kind of get a better understanding of why and what my recommendations would be based on in each one of these phases. And I'm going to show you a little bit of research behind it as well. Starting off with initial intensive care, right? Stabilizing the problem, stopping the damage, and, and getting you out of pain. The whole goal of this care uh, right here is obvious. Let's get you out of pain and back to function as fast as you can. All right, so if, if the chiropractic treatment helps reduce pain a little bit each time, let's get that on as many times as we can. I have some people who will come in the morning and get adjusted, and then they'll even come back in the afternoon and get adjusted, and it just gets them out of pain faster, okay? Uh, so that's that's pretty self-explanatory right there, why we, why we would do intensive care 
on a daily basis. But let's look at corrective care. Now, some people ask the question, well, why would I need to come two to three times a week? Okay. And this is if we have an issue or a problem that needs correcting. So in corrective care, we're training those muscles. We're moving and aligning those bones. We're training the ligaments to not only change elasticity and shape and stretch, right? But we're training muscles to strengthen. We're straining, we're, we're correcting the actual spine in its alignment and its motion and in its strength. And and this process takes two things, time and repetition, all right? I want you to think about going to the gym. The only way that you can get change in your body, and even when you go to the gym, you're affecting bones, muscles, and ligaments, right? You're trying to induce change in bones, muscles, and ligaments. And the only way that you could make a change in your body is through both time and and repetition. In fact, the World Health Organization, if you notice this picture down on the bottom of your screen on the left, it says that you should exercise 60 minutes a day at least three days a week. Okay, so why? Why three days a week? Why three times a week? Why should you exercise three times a week, according to the World Health Association? Because that's what your body responds to, is repetition over time. And you can see like that little picture I put there on the right, you know, we get changes in our tissues when we are consistent um, over time. So like three days a week, you're going to see, you know, some change in your muscles if you're exercising three days a week, four days a week, you might see even more, six days a week, you might even see even more, right? So we want to put people on a rhythm, like a three time a week rhythm to actually make, not only make changes, but then make those changes permanent over amount of time. And this doesn't have to be forever. Usually it's two to three months. Sometimes in bad cases, it's four months. Um, but that corrective care uh, is important so that we can make as much correction as possible in your spine before you're moving into a wellness or a maintenance type phase where you can just maintain that. And here's what wellness or maintenance is. Okay, so the reason why I would recommend wellness or, or, or maintenance or the reason why somebody would want to be under wellness care is to, number one, prevent flare-ups, okay, or most of your flare-ups. So I have some people who have arthritis in their spine. Look, if you can see those vertebrae at the bottom of your screen here, uh, the one on the left says textbook normal. That's a healthy disc. You can see in phase one arthritis or phase one degeneration, we start to lose the disc height. Well, in that phase, we're trying to get as much correction as we can to try to get you back to textbook normal. But somebody have, some people have already let their spine slip into phase two. And you can see in that, under that uh, vertebrae that says phase two that there's already bone spurs there. There's loss of disc height, there's bone spurs, there's calcifications, and even worse on phase three, right? phase three started to fuse those joints together and so <clears throat> and so those things hurt right you don't always feel them but when you tweak them you lift wrong it can cause a flare-up of pain in your spine and it can put uh, inflammation and pressure on those nerves and so when someone would come in on a weekly basis to get adjusted we're giving them the best chance of reducing your chances of a flare-up or, or cause of pain. So if you already have some of that arthritis going on, you absolutely need to be on a weekly type checkup or adjustment so we can prevent that from getting worse, number one, and then we could prevent those flare-ups as much as possible, number two. Now, some people want to just be on a weekly or every other week type of adjustment because it really does improve your health, right? So especially in today's day and age, you want good health. Okay, there are a lot of things going out there, uh, going around that could, you know, decrease your health. And if you're stronger, if you're healthier, if your spine and nervous system is healthier, you're going to be less likely to, to have those types of problems and health issues and getting sick all the time and those types of things. So a lot of people just want their family to stay healthy. So they come in on a wellness, uh, you know, weekly type basis as well. For me personally, and, and what I want for all my patients is uh, a weekly or by or every other week a weekly or every other week and weekly is ideal um, will actually reduce your risk factor for developing spinal degeneration at all okay so if you were to come in weekly and you were checked and adjusted you it, it would be like going and and brushing your teeth every day and cleaning you know getting teeth cleanings you would reduce your risk for tooth decay if you did that well if you take care of your spine if you're coming in weekly or every other week you're you're doing some spinal hygiene exercises you know at home you're going to reduce your risk factors for spinal decay and degeneration which in today's society is at 
it's just at epidemic proportions. I mean, so many people are suffering from spinal degeneration and decay because they didn't know that they could actually help prevent it. And let me actually dive in just before we get done here to a couple of, of research articles to show you what I'm talking about here. So this was a, an article written by a medical researcher named Tapio Vardaman, medical doctor. And uh, they did a lot of studies on rabbits, okay? It's, it's uh, you know, wasn't very nice to the rabbits, but what they did was they would cast the joints. They would keep them from moving. They would immobilize, right, is what we call it, immobilize the joint. And then what they would do is at several different time intervals, they would uh, dissect and cut into that joint and look and see what changes happened because of the immobilization. And the reason why this is important and how it kind of relates to your spine is let's say you get into a car accident or you slip and fall or even you just have postural stress, like you're in front of a computer all the time or, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There are a lot of different types of stress stress that your spine could be under that could cause a tightening or an immobilization or sometimes we call it a fixation in your spine so those joints aren't moving properly anymore well watch this I'm gonna read here from this article it says all situations that lead to immobilization can cause some degree of degenerative change in the musculoskeletal system when immobilization whatever causes it cannot be avoided Every attempt should be made to minimize it and to try to treat its harmful effects. There is some evidence that early mobilization, so the adjustment would be a mobilization, traction and continuous passive motion overcome the harmful effects of immobilization. So we want to make sure that your spine stays mobile, it stays moving, getting a regular adjustment helps to keep your spine moving and that way it, it decreases your chances of developing degenerative changes now you're asking okay so i see if i get adjusted every once in a while i could reduce my risk for degeneration great but what about the frequency now let me show you why i recommend everyone getting checked and adjusted on a weekly basis and at minimum every other week here's why this is taken out of the same article let me read this as they went on to say increased fibrosis of periarticular tissue. So what that means is when they look at these studies of these rabbits and they, they actually cut into the joint, then they could see adhesions that build up in the joint. If, if your joint stays stuck for a long period of time, it will build up fibrosis adhesions. And those adhesions are what turn into calcifications and bone spurs and arthritis. Okay, so I'm gonna go on. Cartilage proliferation at joint edges, that's bone spurs. Uh, atrophy in weight-bearing areas. So atrophy, we all know what that is, right? Shrinking or degenerating. Um, and regional bony ebernation. Again, bone spurring, arthritis, sclerosis, that's, that's calcification. And reabsorption can be found, how, how long? Two weeks after immobilization. So when those joint, when those rabbits, when their joints were fixated, fixated and immobilized for two weeks, they were developing adhesions, and they, those, those adhesions would turn into arthritis in only two weeks of immobilization. All right, and look at what it says. In general, these changes are irreversible. So if your joint gets fixated or stuck or immobilized and it stays that way for over two weeks, in some cases, some of that degeneration can happen in there that can be irreversible. Um, and then look at the bottom where it's uh, underlined in red here. Periodic immobilization over more than 30 days can lead to progressive, and it goes on to, to talk about um, uh, osteophytes and bone spurs and those, type, those types of things. So basically, look, at minimum, you want to be getting checked and adjusted every 30 days, um, but I would recommend every week or, you know, if your budget can't afford that, every other week because you're literally – reducing those those uh those fixations you're reducing the chance of adhesions building in there and you're reducing your chance of developing arthritis of your spine over time so get, being on a wellness schedule can help you to maintain the health of your spine reduce your risk factors for degenerative arthritis uh, feel better function better have less pain less flare-ups uh, and so that's why my ultimate recommendation if you don't need initial 
daily right intensive care and you don't need corrective care which a lot of people do need to start with corrective care but it's only about two to three months of two to three times a week if you do need corrective care but then moving into a wellness or maintenance type phase where you're getting adjusted weekly uh, or at least checked every other week something like that or possibly monthly if you're in really good shape okay all right, so that is my answer to how often should I get adjusted. I hope that made sense. Uh, and if you have any questions, again, feel free to post comments below or send me an email at purelifefamilywellness at hotmail.com. Check out our website. That's purelifefamilywellness.com or give us a phone call to schedule your adjustment. Uh, we'd love to have you in the office and we can do a thorough evaluation, see where you're at as far as your spine and nervous system goes and, uh, and then see what kind of frequency you need and how often you should get adjusted. All right. Thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next one.